How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. This is an RPG Maker MV tutorial on the Chrono Engine. This time we're going to be looking at the ABS mode of the Chrono Engine inside of Mog Hunter's project. Okay, so starting from scratch, what I recommend you do is take Mog Hunter's uh, project. I'm going to put uh, a link in the description below, as I've done in the other versions of this uh, tutorial series, to where you can get this demo project. And I want you to use this demo project as your game. Because we're going we're gonna to change it up, but this is going to... I've got a lot of people asking me about it, and the problem is there's there's just a lot of different things that it could be, and it's really hard for me to troubleshoot everybody's uh, project, especially when they're trying to do a new project and then transporting all the assets in. It it could be a big mess. I did a, like a little mini tutorial on it, but there's a lot of things that go into that. So what I recommend you do is just load up the Chrono Engine, you know, and and convert this into your project. You're you're going to not use any uh, or very few of the the resources that are in this project in your final version, but you're going to use them now for placeholder, so you can get a grasp and understand on how the engine works and have some art and some stuff to play with. Um, so once you've you've got this uh, project installed and stuff, what I want you to do is create a new map. So go right here, create a new one, and just call it the name of what you're going to call your game, because everything else is going to stay here. So you have a, a point of reference to look back at the event and see how Mog Hunter has referenced uh, the plugin commands, where the comments are at, what is in the comments, what it's looking for. So you want to have this as a point of reference right in your project at the end of the game when you've got the, the rest of your project made. You can delete the other stuff you know if it's not needed definitely don't delete the tool map because we're gonna need the tool map to to, spit, to define all of our weapons and skills and everything um, but the at the end of the game you could remove some of the other stuff but for now leave it all there um, I want you to go to your cogwheel go to system change the name right call it whatever you're gonna call it. this is gonna be the name of your game and it'll update down here too it should let's see if it does that this is gonna be uh, Mog Hunters Chrono Engine, uh, Driftwood Gaming, Tuts, there you go, whatever. And uncheck Start Transparent if that's there, and select, uh, what I want you to do is on this blank space that's right here, it'll look like this, but I want you to left click on it so it highlights and press delete a bunch of times, all right? Get rid of any empty characters that are in there. Now edit and add Ash or one of the three characters. You're going to need to add a lot of artwork, but I'm going to show you a trick that I figured out that works for the most part and it stops you from having to make a thousand different sprite sheets. Uh, of course, you're going to want to add that art later on towards the final end of the project, but for now I'm going to show you a trick to, to get around the bugs that, oh, cannot find art, cannot find this, cannot find that. It's a trick that'll work. Um, so anyway. So call this game, uh, uncheck start transparent, delete all the other invisible actors, if there are any, add Ash to your uh, party, uh, name the uh, title of your game, set everything else up however you want, you know what I mean, set your title screen, start uh, customizing your project to, to uh, this, for this version of this game, you're going to be changing everything up. Add your own tile sets in here, um, you know, if, you, if there's some tile sets that you want, from another game, put them in here in the uh, IMG slash uh, tile sets folder and then um, add the images and do that. And I've got tutorials on how to do all that. Anyway, go through all, all this. You won't ne really need to. Uh... Another reason why you want to keep this project is because of the animations in it. This animation in particular is why I had it highlighted. So, um, some people asked me how did the uh, Mog Hunter, uh, how do you like chop grass with the thing? Well, the thing is, you're just removing the, the object is just destroying itself, but it's uh, playing an animation so we're actually just calling an animation and that's it so I guess what Mog Hunter's done here is taken a, a, a slice of one of the you know the the sprite sheets that you would see for like uh, the grass somewhere <clears throat> and then put it inside of a PNG file and then slice it up so you have frames and then made an animation in the MV engine the MV's animation editor is pretty good it's not bad actually I really like it and it's it's useful for things like this. So there you go. That's how they cut. Uh, that's how Mon Mog Hunter set up the, the cut grass. And, and you set it up. Let's see. I think I can look at the event. And I'll show you that the event really isn't much to it. Uh, at the beginning, right here. Let's see. So here's the event. You have a collision ID six and a collision ID fifty one. And then it plays the animation and it erases the event. And that's all that does. So what it's doing right here, Collision ID is checking to see if you're using a skill with this ID. So if you use a skill that's using this ID on this object, 
It's checking to see if that causes a collision. So if I use skill number six on this thing, then it will um, it will uh, detect a collision and and play the animation and erase the event. So it's got to it's got to collect it's got to detect the collision in order to uh, initiate on action button. Um, we'll get into more of that, but that's how this, whoever asked me about that. Sorry, I forgot your name, but that's how they did that. Okay, moving on to um, let's see. You won't need to mess with troops. Um, you will need to set up some enemies, but you don't need to set up their images un unless you want to, <clears throat> because you can use characters for that. But anyway, let's take a look at this. Um, there's a note tag here, state, icon, Y, axis, 64. I'm not sure if this is even necessary inside of the ABS. Now, in Chrono Engine, this, is, this could be for Chrono Engine. But right here, I've got a mutant orc. I, I created a new enemy to see if it was possible and, and, how to, and how to do it in ABS and if it'll crash and whatnot, right? So I created a new enemy, a mutant orc. I didn't give it any image because I'm going to use the character's uh, image for it. Um, so gave it some stats, a lot of HP and high attack, but it, and that's about it. Nothing, nothing crazy. So let's take a look at that mutant orc. One other thing I want to uh, show you is this crystal sword. Okay, so this crystal sword has got tool ID 51. You, you're going to get this at the beginning of the game. In fact, if the, this treasure chest opens up to crystal sword. So you won't be able to cut down these branches until you have something with tool ID 51 on it or tool ID 6. So is this tool ID 6? This is 13. So if I'm using crystal sword and I uh, try to uh, action button on one of these plants while I'm using tool ID 51, this is checking for tool uh, collision ID 51. If it gets it, then it's going to run the contents. As far as I understand, that's how it works. <clears throat> okay, items. The same thing, we're referencing tool IDs and the tool IDs are stored on the tool map. We're going to come back to this a whole lot. Let's just this could go to a basic setting up of a new enemy and um, and how to set up the artwork in the project because that's where you're going to have a lot of problems. So um, we've got our enemy, right? We've created a new enemy. Cool. How do we get that to work? Well, create a new map right here. Um, I think I already told you to create a new map, but basically I want you to create a new map. This is where you're going to store like your, your this is your test map. Everything inside of uh, your new project will be inside of this folder. This is going to be your containing your game. Um, so what I want you to do basically is take something that's the reason why we kept it in the project is so we can have it as a point of reference. So if we scroll through these maps, we see all these events and what we want to look for is an enemy, right? So we're going to go until we find an enemy. Here's an enemy. So let's look at how a mock hunter is calling an enemy. Well, it's an, it's a, an action button event uh, on a map that's got an image in two pages. The first page has got some comments. The first comment is saying, what enemy ID is it? And how far is its range? So uh, event sensor uh, is going to say how far it can wander from where it's uh, posted up at. So say this is, sorry, this is event three, right? So it can go one, two, three, and it can go one, two, three. So it can actually go one, two, three, in a square. So this little enemy can wander three tiles around him, but he'll never go out of that. As far as I understand, that's how that works. Um, there's more note tags, <clears throat> but right here, um, for when the enemy has been defeated, you do self switch D. So you can actually change this to a different piece of artwork if you want. So this shows that he's dead, but they'll disappear. So it doesn't really matter. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy paste one of those into our new project, uh, or our uh, same project, uh, into our new, our new map. And so we've got him here. We got him down here. So now. We've got this enemy here. Now we have like our template, right? So we'll change him up a little bit. So we'll we'll change it up. So now instead of enemy event or enemy ID five, we're gonna say look for enemy ID nine. Also, I went into Photoshop and did some distortion on some of the artwork, just for a. I wanted a mutant orc, you know. So I by distorting his image, I get, I got like this mutant look, and it works fine. Um, so I changed the enemy ID to nine. What does this do? Is this this assigning stats to this enemy? So enemy, uh, when you say comment enemy ID nine, you're basically saying use the stats for the enemy database values if uh, of no, number nine. So now that that enemy has got the va the values of this in the JSON file, it's using the values in that JSON file, um, and then the range. 
Same thing, walking, step in, direction, fix if you want. Um, but let's take a look at the art. Okay, and then also new new page, self switch D, um, blank. So when the enemy is killed, nothing else is going to happen. He will disappear, uh, and that's basically it. Also, uh, rewards are assigned at some point. I can't remember if it's after when this page is hit or somewhere else. I don't know when the code is ran, but when you kill the enemy, you'll get rewards for it. But that's our enemy. We've created a new enemy. But let's take a look at some of the problems you're going to encounter. So I fixed a couple of them, but I left some of them in because I want to try to fix them on the fly with you. And um, here we go. This is the one that I found. So it's failing to load image characters mutant enemies underscore damage dot png because when I created the the enemy, let's just let's zoom out. <clears throat> when I created this enemy, let's look at the the characters. All I really did was created uh, one file. Let's find M. Mutant enemies. So all I did was take the enemies and put a filter over it and some warping and then called it mutant enemies.png. Well actually I had to copy the data because they're sort of a read only. So then you paste it to a new file and then whatever. But anyway, what you need to do is copy the same file you just put in, right? And then paste it. And it'll say mutant under mutant enemies copy so rename that to say mutant enemies underscore attacking so there's a certain number of uh, things that it's looking for um, two things to keep in mind with this if the sprite sheet you're using is only holding the values for that one thing is only holding the artwork for one thing like just take this tool Vulcan right here this is only storing uh, one two three four five six it's only got 12 right it's only got 12 uh, slices of a PNG right 12 parts um, frames of an image so this has only got one image it, it's it's 12 frames of the same image so what do you do is you put a dollar sign before it that's letting game maker or game uh, RPG maker too many, I'm doing too many things guys uh, that's letting RPG maker MV know that this is only got one thing on it so use every piece of art on this uh, PNG file because it's all the same but if you don't include that dollar sign uh, you it'll or uh, if uh, your image looks like this where you've got multiple you know you've got like the bat the goblin the the slime and so forth you don't include the dollar sign so it knows to look only in the section uh, you know what is it one two three by four three by four section for uh, that artwork so it'll work that way but you have to copy paste it and rename uh, variations for each of those things. What are all those things? Okay, well, let's take a look at Hero 1. He's probably got the most. So Hero 1, here's our image of Hero 1. And once again, it's only got the hero. It doesn't. Have, it's not a sprite sheet with a bunch of things on it, so a dollar sign. So Hero 1 is right here. But we also have different activities for when the hero does things. So we've got Hero underscore Act 1. And remember, this is all going to be cap sensitive, too. Whatever you call your first thing, the sec th second thing has to... So if I lowercase hero on this, it won't read it. It won't find it. And same thing, if I don't put capital A, it won't find it. So hero underscore one, or hero 01 underscore act one, then that's for this animation. Act two, this is for that animation. This is also smaller right there. You can see he's swinging his sword right there. Bow one, bow two, cast one, casting, damage, dash, idle. Now... For your enemies, you don't need all of these things, but you will need some of them. If your enemy has the ability to heal itself or someone around it, then you're going to need to have something for, uh, for um, what is it, maybe casting for the spells. But what you will need probably is the name of the, the original. Then you will need uh, probably cast one. No, no, not cast one. That's a... That's a specific one you're gonna need casting so whatever you call your enemy do that underscore casting that underscore damage that underscore dash that underscore idle that underscore jump that underscore pick that just because now if you want to have those images be manipulated in that way you have those and if the engine is looking for that it'll be there even if it's a copy of the same image it won't give you an error and that's what we're trying to do is get rid of all the errors you can always change your casting animation uh, if you have the art skills right to, to so that it looks different when you want to 
but you still need to have a placeholder there even if it doesn't really change the animation so you don't get errors and it doesn't crash so let's do that what do we need we need casting damage dash idle jump maybe pick so what we'll do is we'll copy this we'll paste it now on this copy I'm gonna rename it now I'm gonna delete the other stuff and I'm gonna do underscore casting capital C and I'm gonna just double check a few times here casting that's right and then we're gonna do damage and then dash so we'll do the same thing copy paste rename damage and then we can copy paste rename underscore dash and we'll probably need an idle right so let's copy paste paste please thank you and then we'll do idle and that might be there's probably probably more but anyway those are in there we're gonna save the game I'm gonna test run it and I want to see if we get any more uh, errors we probably will I mean but anyway we got to get our weapon here crystal sword so we can attack him and if he gets damaged okay no error there he attacked us no error there so it looks like we did it so now you guys have a basic understanding of how to put a new enemy in the game and and basically a good method to go about creating your game using the ABS uh, if you want to use this system do what I did here instead of the first method I showed you where you create your own project do this method because you're gonna have a lot of uh, a lot less errors in the long run it's just gonna be better overall for you guys so that's gonna do it for this tutorial it went a little bit longer than I wanted but that's fine um, there will be maybe some more. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'll have a few more things to talk about uh, when it comes to ABS. Put uh, your special requests. What do you want to see? I'm not going to do every... Uh, I, I'm going to cover this a little bit more. But I, there's going to be so much to this that there's no way I'm going to be able to cover it all. You know. Um, so um, I, I hope other people do tutorials on this. Um, Robert, come on, man. You said something about it earlier, I think. We, we need more people doing this um, because... I can't figure it all out. I would like to have some other people help me figure it out. And uh, if I have helped you figure something out, please uh, pay me back by uh, liking the video or subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I've got RPG Maker MV Tutorials, Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials, game development stuff. Check out my website if you need more information. Contact me on Discord if you want to, you know, just uh, talk to me or have a question, specific question or something. Um, I would love to help you out there. Um, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. I love you guys so much. Um, continue to back me if you are able to, and I will continue to do the best I can. You guys are great. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye-bye. Oh, wait. One more thing. Before I let you go, uh, I want to let you guys know about something else I forgot. Um, you're going to want to turn off the Mog Title splash screen. So just write that, turn that off, which you probably already know about. And what was the one other thing? Uh, inside the Chrono Engine. Uh, you're going to have to go to the Chrono Engine, right? And then um, go to ATB mode. And I put it on weight, just uh, if you're using the ATB mode for the CTB. But anyway, this is for the... the uh, the ABS right so if you want to use the ABS you have to double click on battle mode and then you have to change this to one right so zero is going to be the default chrono just change that to one and you, you'll be good and when you set your home point on your new map you should be set ready to go all right that's it for this tutorial thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you guys next time. Bye -bye.